Hello there, my name is Ben Holt and I'm delighted and honoured to be presenting this video abstract for our paper on evolutionary diversification in the marine realm as part of the international celebrations for the great Alexander von Humboldt. Our paper is in press at the frontiers of biogeography and you can currently download a preprint of the article by visiting their website. So our paper is about marine diversification. The world is a very biologically diverse place and the oceans are certainly no exception. People have been asking how all this diversity has come about ever since Darwin and Wallace's time. Today, most people think that generally for a species to split into two or more species, it needs to be first split into two or more geographically separated populations in a process known as allopatric speciation. But what about the vast open expanses of the ocean? There are no obvious barriers there, at least not to land loving humans like myself. And on top of that, Many marine taxa have planktonic dispersal, and that means that they're capable of dispersing hundreds or even thousands of miles. So the key question that my co-authors and myself set out to answer was, do marine biogeographical patterns that we see today suggest that geographically driven speciation happened in the oceans in the past? Or more specifically, are marine evolutionary lineages physically separated? Do they tend to be clustered in distinct parts of the ocean? And we had a important associated question, and that was about the environment. So certain taxa can be expected to have certain environmental preferences, and that might be a better explanation of the patterns that we see. So uh, we wanted to factor that out if possible. So we chose to use these two well-known marine mammal groups to answer this question, cetaceans and pinnipeds. And they're very good for this purpose because they are very well studied. In particular, they have comprehensive distributions. So all of the species have a species range map provided by IUCN. They also have very comprehensive and, and good phylogenies available. And in our analysis, we actually combine these two data sets uh, in order to study the patterns we're interested in. Finally, they also have uh, a relatively good fossil record. And even though we didn't include that data in our analysis, it was nevertheless very important for our interpretation of our results. So we mapped out how these marine mammal lineages were distributed across the world. And in these maps, grid cells with similar colors tend to have similar lineages within them and ones with different colors uh, have uh, very different evolutionary lineages uh, across them. Uh, so this is the cetacean result, and uh, you can see that, uh, okay, there are some differences uh, between the North and South Pole, uh, but generally speaking, um, the lineages are fairly sort of homogeneously distributed across the world. And certainly we found that that was the case compared to our, our random expectations. They were actually significantly dispersed across the world. If we look at the pinnipeds, they're very different. They're much more clustered. We have these distinct regions where uh, we, we can see different evolutionary groups. And perhaps uh, this could be an indication of, uh, of geographical speciation taking place. We're actually able to measure the strength of these associations for, uh, for both the groups and not just for geographical distance, but also the uh, impact of environmental factors. And there you can see that the cetaceans tended to be uh, dispersed and significantly so, whereas the pinnipeds uh, were clustered, but uh, just short of being significant. And so for both groups, uh, there was no, there's no strong sign of, uh, of geographical clustering of these evolutionary lineages. Now, that could be due to range shifts. And certainly we found that both groups also had a strong link to the environment. So these taxa are tracking their environment and environment changes at a fast rate. So uh, that could explain the results that we see. Or 
there could be non-geographical speciation processes at work in these groups and uh, we discuss both of these possibilities in our paper. Finally, just to mention some of the important exceptions that we found. So in particular, there were some cetacean groups that uh, that weren't dispersed and did show some really strong clustering. Uh, and this particular group of, of co coastal dolphins uh, uh, were the strongest example. You can see there that uh, they were, had a really strong and, and significant uh, clustering effect. So uh, they are a good example of uh, potential allopatric speciation in the marine environment. And this group of Antarctic seals, uh, they, uh, there's four species here, and they all completely overlap in their distribution. So unlike the overall pattern for pinnipeds, um, they, they were actually dispersed and perhaps uh, a good example uh, of, of non-geographical speciation processes occurring. So please do go to the Frontiers website and download our paper to find out more. And thank you very much for listening.